Here we're looking at uh, a piece of the famous Cape York meteorite from northern Greenland. It was found in the early 60s. And uh, here we see the uh, patterns that the two metal phases define. Uh, there's camosite and there's tainite. Camosite is the nickel poor iron and um, tainite is the nickel rich one. And um, they have uh, exolved and that's why we get these intrigue, intricate in uh, intergrowth patterns. And it's believed that the size of the individual lamellae defines the cooling age. And um, these samples from Cape York, they have several percent nickel, so it's a very nickel-rich variety. And uh, there's something else in this particular um, meteorite, and that's large blobs of troilite, and they seem to uh, have been fluid. They have a um, somewhat low bait outer margin, so they were maybe blobs at the time when this material solidified. So we can zoom in a little bit more, and then here we see the rather intricate intergrowth of the camosite and the tainite. And um, another interesting uh, observation in these meteorites is that they have reasonably high cobalt concentrations, potentially up to 2%. And there is a lot of platinum group element concentrations in there. And uh, this is what makes uh, iron meteorites particularly attractive for space mining in the future once we have developed technology to actually get there and harvest some of the material. The largest number of these would be in the asteroid belt. So it's a bit of a technical challenge to get there and uh, retrieve this material and bring it back to Earth. But it's estimated that some of these larger asteroid bodies, they could be several tens of thousands um, times the worth of the entire uh, terrestrial economy. So from a financial point of view, it is certainly highly attractive to get some of this material and use it for technological development on our planet.